Hey everyone, welcome to another installment from Ampro Engineering. We're going to have another buyer's guide today on the LDRC A-Series vehicles. And the one that we're gonna look at today is the RX-7. This is the FC model. Now I do wanna open this up. I think I cut that already. My son is going to be helping me today. Can you say hello? Can you say hi? No, now he doesn't wanna say hi. All right, so here is our box. I'm already digging the white on white. These are for the remote. Okay, take the car out. This has a different A-arms. Interesting, the arms are different than the 8.6. This car feels a little bit bigger. Wow, I feel like the suspension. A little bit high in the front. Okay, some extra pieces there. Charger. Tires are, these are drift. Yeah, these are hard drift tires. It does not, from what I can see here, come with any non-drift tires. Again, the suspension is a bit on the high side, although I have to admit, it definitely feels better than the 8.6 model. Okay, cool. The body is extremely well done. If this was just sitting on your shelf, someone would assume it's a static model. It's really quite nice. Lacking a bit on the taillight details. Do we have stickers that I've missed out on? Oh, hang on a second. Uh, I don't know what these are. Oh, they actually have suspension arm limiters to lower the suspension, which is great. Uh, wipers, door handles, side view mirrors. Interesting, yeah, so that will, I believe it will lower the arm by preventing it to fully extend. I do want to put a battery in this. Let's unscrew this. All right, so here is the battery. Again, I don't like how these come plugged in. Can you see oh, well, can, I, can I see that? Can I see that? Thank you. Uh, I will take this thing out here. These are two AAA batteries. All right, so a couple of my rechargeable lithium. No, let me go shh, shh. Lithium ion batteries here. I'm curious if this thing has any power in it. Pop all that back together. Okay, so we do have some power. What is in there? Something that I might need later? Yeah. <gasps> I'm gonna need those later. All right, so with the battery in the car, power the remote on, power the car on. Quite a bit of steering. Boy, it'll even drift on the on the table here. I have to admit, I do love the overall look of this car. I'm again not a big FD or FC fan. This thing looks really. Oh wait. It has an onboard gyro. I wonder if that's controllable. What's in there? Uh, do we have tail lights? I can't tell. Headlights. Wow, three speeds, it sounds like. So A, low, medium, high. That's cool. B. I wonder if B is going to limit steering. Let's try C. Never gets old. All right, I'm gonna see if B does anything with the onboard gyro. Okay, so B will set the gyroscope sensitivity between 25 and 100% in increments of 25. I do wish there was a way to limit the amount of steering because again, I'm not really that into drifting. Maybe it's because I suck at it, come to think of it. Hmm. You know what in here? Batteries? Uh-oh. All right, I put in the little limiter here. It's interesting because it just, it just pops in here and really just limits it. You can see it just rubs on that. 
and now the ride height in the front looks perfect. I do like the fact that you do have this significantly raised version because now you can take it outside and just drive it around. Um, although this is the correct height, I mean, honestly, anything outdoors is gonna be way, way too rough for this vehicle. So the ability to actually give it the ground clearance is gonna be very useful. Let's take it for a spin. All right, when you turn the Mazda on, it will initially default to 100% gyro assist. Pressing the B button, we'll set it to 25%. I don't have any cones, so I went ahead and just found a couple of other cars with pop-up headlights. We've got an FB right there. And in the distance right there is a Fiat X19, so we're all in good company. All right, remember I'm terrible at this, so let's give it a go. Okay, I'm gonna set it to 50. I don't know if I felt like I did better with 50% or I'm equally terrible. You tell me. Try 75. try 100. Either I'm getting better or maybe the gyro is actually helping quite a lot. So we'll set it 
down to 25 and try it again with the lowest speed. Man, maybe the gyro really is helping. Okay, so that's 25, 50, 75, 100. Car battery's dying. Oh, cool. Is that the car battery or is that announcing something else? All right, let's charge it up. I didn't know it did this. I'll be the first to say that I'm no good at that. However, this was a lot of fun. You only saw a little bit of the actual footage, but I was out there for about three battery packs. I drove it, my son drove it, my daughter drove it, we all did, we were all terrible. They may have been better than me, but what I was actually surprised the most about was the assistance of the gyro. I did end up running this at about 100, yeah, between 75 and 100 percent, and I felt like I was, you know, with a lot more practice, might be getting somewhere. This is two-wheel drive only, so I believe two-wheel drive drift cars are a lot harder to drive, perhaps more accurate. It was becoming a lot of fun to drive. And then I couldn't get over the looks on this thing. Remember that this is a painted body. I went ahead and did the panel lines on the car to give it a little bit more pop right there. The mirrors are also painted. They look great. The wipers are on, door handles, the rear wiper is on as well. A little bummed out that the taillights, and these do work as you saw in the video, a little bummed out that they didn't have as much detail as I would normally like. But we do have turn signals, taillights, brake lights, and reverse lights, which is really, really neat. And then I love these pop-up headlights. They look so good. Actually, even with the surface mount LED, it looks like a real car running modern headlights. Of all of the on-road cars I have from LDRC, this is miles, miles more finished than that first one we built. I mean, the just the fitment of the suspension feels a lot better. The fact that it has adjustable ride height, the fact that it has an onboard gyro, the Okay, fine. Again, uh, the radio is ugly and I forgot to put this on, but it works. Functionality wise, it is operational. And the question is, do you want one? If you are interested in doing any kind of larger scale drifting, this is a very inexpensive way to get started. I think these are under $75. And again, look at the body on this thing. It's beautiful. It is a little bit annoying that it only comes with the drift tires since that prevents you from driving it normally. Set up with a proper track and there's actually one not too far from here. Um, this is going to be a lot of fun. If you are a beginner, you've never really driven an on-road car before, I think this might be a little bit too much. I would get a non-drift car first. This is 1 18th scale, so it's a really nice size. And I think a good size for a beginner, better than a 1 24th or even a uh, Mini Z uh, by Kyosha, which is even smaller than that. If you are into higher end vehicles, I don't know where the customization is going to be on this thing here. There's, at least at this point, there's not all that much you can do with the car, save for cosmetic work. You know, if you are looking at something where customization and modification is your thing, probably not it. Likely this is going to be the beginner car for someone that wants to start drifting because it is one hell of a way to start. Again, pop-up headlights. I will have a follow-up video with not only this, but a couple of the other LDRC on-road cars at a track not too far from my house. But I did want to get this video out and I also have to get out the video prior to this one here with the second iteration of the Toyota AE86. So I'll get that out very soon. My friends, thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time.